today's discussion, we are going to discuss the derivation of the four fundamental equations in kinematics. And this video tutorial is very special because we are now on the way to 1K subscriber. Ciao! In today's discussion, we are going to discuss about the derivation of the four fundamental equation in kinematics. And for us to easily understand those kinematic equations, let's be familiarized to these kinematic variables. So we have change in x as the displacement, t as time interval, b sub 0 as initial velocity, b as final velocity, and a as constant acceleration. And this kinematic equation works only on constant acceleration. So it doesn't work on motion that the acceleration is changing. So to formally start, let's be familiarized for the four fundamental equations in kinematics. As you can see, this is the four fundamental equations in kinematics. And there are something special in this equations. As you can see on the four fundamental equations in kinematics, in every equation, there is a missing variable. So that what makes these equations special. And for us to formally start our discussion for deriving the four kinematic equation, let's start for the number one equation. Number one, so we're going to tackle how this first kinematic equation derived. So we have final velocity is equal to initial velocity plus a t. To start our derivation, we start our computation or derivation in this equation. So uh, we have a which is constant acceleration. We all know that the equation for acceleration is equal to change in v over change in time. Then, what we do next is just simply expand the change in velocity. So, the change in velocity can rewrite also as b or final velocity minus initial velocity. Then, write change in time. Then, isolate the equation. Isolate the equation by multiplying change in time in both sides. So let's, re let's multiply change in time on both sides. Then we can eliminate change in time on the right side, then multiply A times change in time. Then after this, we get A times change in time is equal to B minus b sub 0. Then let's rewrite this equation by using this. So we have final velocity is equal to initial velocity plus a times change in t. And for the clean sake or for the sake of the clean part of the equation, we use only t. So we don't write that change sign. So we get this first equation. Next one, let's try deriving the second kinematic equation. The second kinematic equation say that change in displacement is equal to final velocity plus initial velocity over 2 times, okay, let's use this, so plus times time. Then, by this time, let's use geometry in solving, geometry and calculus in solving or proving or deriving the kinematic, these kinematic equations, the kinematic equation rather. So let's use the velocity time graph. Like what I said, let's assume that 
we have a constant acceleration. So, we have a straight line slope. Then, as you can see here, from initial velocity to final velocity, as the time passed by, the slope is a straight line because we assume that it is on a constant acceleration. And the area under this curve is the displacement because the area under the curve is also called as the integration. So the integration of velocity is displacement. Okay, so the area, as you can see, which is we divide into two, which form as triangle and rectangle. So we said that change in x is equal to the total area. And as you can see, in the geometry on the picture below, or uh, below on the right side, rather, you can see that we have two figures formed, which is the x sub 1, which is the rectangle, and x sub 2 as the triangle. Then, let's try to solve the two, uh, the two figures. So, for x sub 1, which is a rectangle, we all know that the area, or the formula of the area is length times width, which is the length is, what would be the length? The length is time. Okay? Then the width is the initial velocity. So let's interchange the place. We have initial velocity times time. Then let's compute for the area of x sub 2, which is the triangle. So the area formula for triangle is 1 half base times height. Then, let's substitute the value. We have 1 half. And the base here, the base is T. And the height is from B minus B sub 0. Then, we, then, what we need to do now is just simply get the total area. So, the total area is just simply X sub 1 plus X sub 2. Then, what we did next is substitute the value. So let's substitute the value for the total area in order for us to get this. So the value for x sub 1 or the equation for x sub 1 is b not, or b, b sub 0 t plus the equation for x sub 2 is 1 half t then multiply by the subtraction of b min and b sub 0. So let's compute this. The first thing we need to do is just simply distribute the 1 half t on both on b and in on initial velocity. So we have formed this by distributing. We have 1 half b t minus 1 half b, b sub 0 t. Then, as you can see, there is a same variable here. So, what we get is b, not t, b sub 0 times t minus 1 half b sub 0 t. We get, okay, it is wrong. It should be 1 half. Because 1 minus 1 half is 1. So, we get, I, what is 1 half, rather. So, we have 1 half b, not, b sub 0 t plus 1 half b t. Then, what we do next is just simply factor out 1 half t okay because we we've been factor out 1 half t so what we do is just simply factor 1 half t so 1 half t times b it should be plus b sub 0 okay then just simply pi it should I have a mistake. It should be plus. Okay. It should be plus. Then we have b plus b sub 0 over 2 times time. So we already derived the second kinematic equation. Now, let's perform the derivation for the third kinematic equation. And by this time, let's use algebra for deriving. Okay. We have change in x is equal to b na b sub 0 t plus 1 half 8 80 squared so 
let's derive this equation. To derive this equation, let's use the second kinematic equation, which is what we solved earlier. So the second kinematic equation is change in x is equal to b plus b not or b sub zero rather over two times time so that is the second kinematic equation so what we do next is just simply divide it t in both sides so divide t on both sides let's divide t on both sides so we can eliminate t on the right side so what what happen next is we have change in x over t then is equal to b plus b sub zero over two then after having this let's plug in the first kinematic equation for value of b or the final velocity okay let's go back to the first kinematic equation here so let's substitute or plug in the value of the first kinematic equation on the final velocity so we have this change in x over t and the first kinematic equation state that final velocity is equal to b sub zero plus at so we have this then let's plus the b sub zero over two then let's simplify our equation by simplifying equation we get change in x over t is equal to b naught over 2 plus a t over 2 plus b naught over 2. What we do next is just combine the variables that is like or like variables. So we have this b sub 0 over 2 plus b sub 0 over 2 is b sub 0 plus at over 2 so let's erase it first so we can simplify the our equations our equation rather so we have change in x let let us rewrite it first change in x over t is equal to b not b sub 0 rather i'm sorry b sub 0 plus at over 2 then what we do next is just simply multiply t on both sides so we can eliminate t on the left side then we multiply t on the right side so we have change in x is equal to b not t plus one half a t squared so we already derived the third kinematic equation now let's derive the port kinematic equation okay let's derive the port kinematic equation using algebra also so let's write first the equation so the port kinematic equation is b squared is equal to initial velocity squared plus 2 2 2 a change in x or displacement change in displacement or displacement rather so let's use again the second kinematic equation as the start for our derivation so we have change in x equal to b plus b net uh, b sub zero over 2 times t and as you can see in the port kinematic equation, there is no value of time. So what we do is let's substitute a value for time using, let's substitute the value for time using the first kinematic equation. Let's derive the value for time using the first kinematic equation in order for us to eliminate time on the second kinematic equation so let's rewrite let's rewrite the first kinematic equation use the first kinematic equation in order for us to derive the value of time 
So, we have final velocity is equal to initial velocity plus AT. Then, let us isolate this. So, we get B minus B is not 0. Then, let's divide A on both sides. So, we get, okay, let's divide A on both sides. So, we get as T or time or time interval is equal to B minus B sub 0 over A. So, let's substitute. What we do is just simply substitute this on second kinematic equation. So, let's use this equation. So, change in x is equal to b plus b sub 0 over 2. Then, let's substitute the t as what we get on our first kinematic equation. So, we have this b minus b sub 0 over a. Then, let's multiply this value. So, the Operation use is multiplication. So, let's just multiply. B times B. Okay? B times B is B squared. B times negative B sub 0 is negative B, B sub 0. Then, B sub 0 times B is B, B sub 0. Then, B sub 0 times negative B sub 0 is negative B sub 0 squared. Then, 2 times A is 2A. So, we can eliminate this because they are unlike sign. So, what happened next is we have change in x is equal to, so what we have now is b squared minus b naught squared over 2a. So, let us erase first the writing so we can simplify this equation. Let's erase this, then simplify our equation. So, by continuation, we have change in x is equal to b squared minus b sub 0 squared over 2a. The first thing we need to do is just multiply 2a on both sides. So, let's multiply 2a on both sides. So, by using this, we can eliminate 2a on the right side. So, what we have now is b squared minus b sub 0 squared is equal to 2a change in x. Then, using subtraction property, we get b squared is equal to b, not b sub 0 squared plus 2a change in x. So, we already derived the port kinematic equation.